My name is Semra and I am an application scientist, but also I am research and development scientist. The mission of brain cell um, is to provide um, most relevant neurons and microglia and astrocytes to researchers to advance the neuroscience field. And that is to, uh, by making a great model for the uh, disease, um, you know, phenotypes. Those researchers mainly use these cells to understand the diseases, what is going on at the cellular level, at the protein expression level um, that causes that disease phenotype. So um, the very first step of the manipulation of the signaling pathway requires um, gene manipulation and requires manipulation of protein expression either by overexpression or by knocking down or silencing of the um, genes. So the, all of the work that I am doing, I am hoping that uh, they will provide a guidance, they will provide a starting point for researchers to use our cells. I started trying and testing very traditional methods. And the very first traditional methods I have worked for um, transfection was chemical transfection methods. And that is a method that many researchers want to use and it can be used very successfully among you know, various cell types, but um, it is not the case for neurons and glia. Another method that I tested is the more recently developed technique and it is called lipid nanoparticles. And this transfection method actually become a very popular uh, after COVID vaccine development. So COVID vaccines are mRNA-based based vaccines, and in order to deliver those mRNAs into the cells, um, lipid nanoparticles are developed. And um, there are a variety of lipid nanoparticles based on the lipid types that are used to generate those, um, and I tested several that are available commercially. Um, for the understand the effectiveness of this each um, of the each method that I tested uh, I had two criteria the first one was the efficiency mm -hmm. and in the efficiency I mean um, in the cell population that I am transfecting what is the percentage of cell population that are getting transfected that are taking up, taking those uh, transgenes in in all these methods I used a reporter gene which is an EGFP protein a fluorescent protein um, so every single method I am delivering this EGFP based um, either DNA or mRNA to visualize uh, under the microscope how many cells are taking up um, those transgenes um, the second criteria was was to have low toxicity. So in most of the cases, um, neurons and glia are very fragile. Um, they can get transfected, but they can also have very high toxicity because they don't like those foreign material in the culture and they are sensitive. Microglia um, is very hard to transfect. So neurons and astrocytes, they're I had like a couple of methods that worked pretty nicely, uh, but for microglia, all the traditional methods that I have tested failed miserably. And the main reason, and this is again um, well known, uh, is that the cells are phagocytotic cells. So the material that I am trying to deliver, they usually don't go through the membrane, but instead microglia just phagocyto phagocytose them into lysosomes and they just degrade that material. So the transgene that I am delivering doesn't get a chance to go to cytoplasm or nucleus to be translated. Um, but uh, the LNP uh, approach, the lipid nanoparticle approach, actually worked great for microglia. It also worked good for neurons and astrocytes, but try finally finding a method that works for that hard to transfect cell was very, um, very awarding. Um, in order to decrease the toxicity that I am seeing in neurons, I try to remove the media, like make some media changes or try to um, observe them daily to see if I can control that toxicity. So um, that is one thing that I think very challenging, especially for the transfection. And the other thing that might come as a surprise, but um, the neurons, astrocytes, or microglia 
um, the transfection can be modified uh, at the time of the transfection that you are doing. So neurons and astrocytes tend to take up the um, delivered material when they are transfected very early on, like during seeding or one day after seeding. For microglia, for example, which was very surprising to me, um, they didn't take up when I put the LNP particles in the media on day one, but they took up those materials when I transfected them at day four, much, much better compared to the uh, seeding. So there are little tips and tricks to these transfection methods and um, you need to consider and observe how the cells can tolerate um, basically daily. So in my you know, trial of these different transfection methods, I used EGFP as my reporter, right? So, and I used this EGFP reporter gene under a constitutively active promoter. That is, when the gene is delivered successfully to cells, uh, there is no controlling of the gene expression. It will continuously get expressed. One downside of this is that um, it is stressful. So for me, the big advantage of EGFP uh, reporter is to visualize it under the microscope throughout the culture um, duration and the transfection um, experiment. But um, it can be toxic. And in some cases, I might be seeing some toxicity just because of that overexpression rather than the transfection method itself. We can modify that reporter gene and modify the promoter to be more um, specific to the cell type. Like if you use an endogenous promoter specific for neurons, you definitely don't have that much of expression um, and that you don't have that much of toxicity as well. Um, so the other limitation I will say, and like I said, the transfection method, every one of them comes with advantages and disadvantages. For example, um, biological methods like AAV works great, um, but if you want to um, deliver a gene that is um, big, that is large in size, um, there is a limitation. Like you cannot, for example, package more than 5 kb um, plasmid DNA into AAV. So, all of these needs to be considered um, to you know, decide which transfection method to choose at the end. And it all uh, depends on your um, hypothesis, it depends on your endpoint assay, and um, they need to be considered. Brain cell is continuously developing new cell types, and um, it, I am very excited to test those new cell types and to see which transfection method works for those cell types. Because I am sure that when researcher wants to, researchers want to use these cell types, they will also want to you know, manipulate gene expression at certain points. So um, I do want to give that kind of guidance. And the other thing I am really excited and I am very thankful that I was able to find this uh, LNP you know, to be successful for microglia. Um, I do have a project that is going on for microglia and in that project, in that study, uh, I am testing dif different chemical compounds to see if I can modify, um, you know, some endpoint. And I want chemical compounds are, you know, can be very dirty and you know that they are effective one signaling pathway, but it can be effective for other signaling pathways as well. So. Um, supporting the data that I am obtaining with the chemical compounds with some genetic approach and modifying the target protein, you know, um, with that um, LNP transfection uh, will be very um, valuable. Um, it will be, uh, it will add another layer of verification to my studies as well. So I am very excited that I was able to find a method to uh, transfect microglia.